the earliest memory that I have when I go back is our soccer game. And that's kind of where I start um, recess. And I love the sport. I love soccer. Um, and we were losing. And the bell rings and we lost the game. And I put my arm around my best friend and I said, this is going to be a really bad day <laughs> as we were walking into the, um, into the school. And that's what I remember. When we'd come, it was actually my favorite part. Um, in a couple of my classes, we'd come in from recess and we got to just lay our heads on the desk and we got read to. And that was my favorite part of the day. So we were actually being read to um, when there was a knock at the door. And um, it was Doris. And she had a um, big smile on her face, happy, enthusiastic. Um, telling us there was an assembly. Um, we were very excited. But, that, but when I looked at my teacher, confusion, like, we're not, there's not a planned assembly today. And that morning, of course, it started for us with um, reading in the Book of Mormon and having family prayer. We would do that every morning before the children left for school. We always hugged each other at the door and said we loved each other and they would go off to school. The interesting thing as I was talking to people is they were planning their escape route and I had never, I thought we were going to die. I was absolutely terrified because I, I did not even, it didn't even dawn on me that we could get out of that room. I went back down and parked on Main Street. By then they had the barricade up around the school so you can approach the school and began waiting. Uh, yes, I was at the gymnasium at uh, White Mountain Junior High School just watching the ball game and uh, received a call from my dispatcher that I needed to call them immediately and so I did and Sheriff Stark told me that there was a hostage situation going on up in uh, Cokeville and the school, all the children had been taken hostage, there was explosives and the sheriff from Lincoln County needed my assistance to get up there. We had no idea um, early on what the situation was with our children. Was it guns? We, and, then, and then it was a while later when the news came back that it was a bomb. Lots of, um, lots of noise, but I, I, he was sweating, just, just sweating and, and dabbing. And, um, and very nervous and um, teachers were going in and out and um, there was actually quite a bit of a stir when the band teacher had gone out and David had shot him. That, that caused um, quite a stir. But we didn't really, um, we, there wasn't a lot of loud um, noise, but I remember the smell there was the gas smell that was making us pretty sick. In the small southwestern Wyoming town of Cokeville turned into an afternoon of terror today. A man and a woman carrying bombs and guns took the entire elementary school hostage. The couple took 150 children and school officials into a classroom in an ordeal that ended with an explosion, gunfire, injuries, and death. Back in, when, when this thing happened, uh, the radio systems throughout the state weren't like they are today. Uh, each individual entity was dispatching all of the emergency responders uh, from those areas, the highway patrol, ambulances and everything. And as I was traveling through uh, along the way, the dispatcher, we all had the same frequencies, and the dispatcher was updating me on what was taking place as I traveled. And as I was going, I was just going through uh, camera, and she says, the bomb has exploded. Well, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to die. I mean, I, I, um, I didn't see people scrambling. I looked up and saw Doris on fire. Um, it was black. But I turned around, went in the corner, 
and I went like this and curled down and the reason I have such a, I had a really bad burn on my right arm because of, um, there was carpet on the one wall where you'd stick um, our pictures and that had caught on fire. You think of a bomb and I have to think of what, what I know as a bomb and what it would, would happen. I thought, I thought, oh boy, there's just going to be a bunch of dead people. I was thinking, just kind of praying in my mind to Heavenly Father. And um, I remember saying to him that if he needed my children that day, it was okay. By the time I had gotten out, um, I, I just went running toward the street and my dad had been looking all over for me. And um, there was ambulances and police officers. And um, my dad was actually, had his gun loaded, heading to the school. <laughs> As I was pulling into town, uh, of course they had all the streets blocked off and uh, there was people around the school in, uh, into the entranceway. Uh, and I pulled up in front of the school. I, I saw an object laying out on the, on the grass out in front of the school. Uh, the windows were all black. And I just expected to see dead bodies every place, but I didn't, surprisingly. And um, my three children came running up the street. Their faces were blackened. It was hard to recognize them, really. And I will never forget that reunion on Main Street. I don't think it'll be any sweeter when we meet again on the other side than it was on Main Street to have all three of my children. When I thought perhaps we would have no children in our community. And there they were. The tuna fish cans, as we learned later, was, was filled with uh, chemicals and the blasting caps that was inside or laying inside of, of the cans uh, was designed to go off first and then the gasoline was on a delay, a, a blasting cap delay and after the, the uh, chemicals, the dry powder and everything was all out in the air then the gas would go off and boom, off it would go, it would just, would just ignite it. We do a Christmas play and the stage was filled. We, we, um, we had each class fill up a stair and then they just kind of went down. And um, my mom, I remember her talking about how um, as all of the students are standing there, it was because the entire school would have been gone. And so I guess it was very emotional for the entire town because um, all the children were there. Did I believe in the in divine intervention? Absolutely. There should have been 160 plus people dead laying in that room right there, but there wasn't. We knew that we'd been incredibly blessed. Kevin sat right next to Billy Joe Hutchinson, who was the worst burn student in the school, and yet he didn't have any burns. And you know what? Even if we um, all would have died, our town still would have been strong. We, they would have made it through.